Welcome to video 11.1 .1 for the UOIT AEDT programs Adult Learning in a Digital Context course. In this video, we will examine the items you see before you on the screen. Before we begin, take a few moments, pause the video, and consider the following questions. Consider the purpose of tests. Like other assessments we have considered, tests also serve as a means to gather evidence of student learning. So if tests serve to gather evidence of student learning, why are tests considered a more traditional and outdated form of assessment? Or why are tests sometimes considered in a negative light? Well, if we look at the strengths and limitations of tests, we might find some answers. At times, instructors find themselves with extremely large numbers of students in their classes, and tests, especially if completed online, could be less time consuming than other authentic types of assessment that we know could provide rich experiences and opportunities for students to build understanding and demonstrate their learning. However, is it possible in a situation where you might have hundreds of students? So, if tests are going to be administered, instructors need to understand the core principles of effective assessment and apply those principles to the creation of tests and test items. You are probably aware of the limitations, but some of them, as suggested by Jacobs, include lack of alignment with the class material and learning objectives, and oftentimes the questions just focus on knowledge recall with little application. Sometimes the questions are not worded appropriately. And then one must consider the length of a test. What makes a test too long or too short for learners? And is it realistic for one test or exam to provide a solid sample of students' learning? Remember the example given at the onset of the course. In that example, I referenced a university pathology course exam that served as the only form of assessment for the course. There was only one opportunity to demonstrate learning, and that took place at the one final exam. Consider issues of reliability or the degree to which an assessment tool, in this case the final exam, produ produces stable and consistent results, as well as issues of validity or how well a test measures what it is supposed to measure. We examined these issues earlier in the course regarding assessment in general, and those issues certainly apply to tests. Let's take a closer look. Piontech acknowledges the importance of creating tests that are valid or address what they were intended to address. And is the test reliable or does it produce stable and consistent results? Piontech also acknowledges that the test items need to be recognizable by the students. Have they participated in instructional experiences that address content and skills in the test? And is the test realistic as far as how much effort and time learners spend to take the test? Take another look at these characteristics and then take a look at the alignment of learning objectives, instruction, and assessment. Is the assessment in alignment with the learning objectives and instructional activities? Take a moment to pause and consider how these characteristics reflect the previous slide. Piontech stresses the importance of distributing test items based on the content and or skills emphasized during a particular amount of time. For example, if you spend 10% of the course time that will be assessed by a particular test addressing topic A and 90% of the time addressing topic B, then the test needs to reflect that proportion of time. Language should be consistent with the content and skills addressed. Keep it clear and simple. Create a variety of test questions or items first before you actually compose the test itself. Then you can decide if you want to group test items by format, for example, all of the multiple choice together and all the essay questions together, or perhaps you might organize the items by content or topic. Then let the test sit. Review the test and the items. Ensure instructions are clear. The purpose of the test is evident, the amount of time is indicated, as well as the scoring and grading. Jacob stresses to go back to the learning objectives. 
Ensure your instruction in the test reflects the instructional experiences that hopefully reflect the learning objectives. Let's go back to Bloom's. The resources from previous weeks could help you in creating test items. If most of your test items contain verbs such as those listed in the recall or remember column, you might want to ensure that your instruction and test items address higher cognitive processes such as analyzing or evaluating. Jacobs also stresses the importance of creating test items that are proportional to the content topics and learning objectives taught. This is sometimes referred to as a table of specifications. This table is an excerpt from one of your readings. This is quite simplistic, but the point is to demonstrate an example of a table of specifications. This lists the content topics hopefully derived from the learning objectives of the course in this dimension of the table and the cognitive processes to be addressed in this dimension. Now notice this is using the original version of Bloom's, knowledge instead of remembering, comprehension instead of understanding, etc. The goal of this table is to include test items that address content and skills in the same proportion as they were addressed during the instructional experiences. By doing this, one is enhancing the content validity of the test. In other words, does the test address the content that it is intended to address? Presumably, instructional experiences provided students with opportunities to learn about physical properties of oxygen, chemical properties of oxygen, preparation of oxygen, and uses of oxygen. And by looking at this table, one presumes that because 40% of the test will be devoted to the uses of oxygen, that 40% of the instructional period that this summative assessment addresses centered on the uses of oxygen. If only 10% of the class time was spent on the uses of oxygen, then the test's validity is decreased. This video introduced you to using tests as a form of assessment. Now that you have viewed the introductory video, consider the following questions. This is what the video addressed and we'll discuss during tutorial. Thanks for watching.